Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Robert Weiss with us today with Multivision Digital. And what we're going to be talking about is incorporating video into a business sales process. And the, you know, because of course, video has been there for business to consumer for, you know, well over a decade. Uh, But in a lot of business to business types of interactions, uh, video is still fairly early in its adoption curve. Uh, Robert, uh, feel free to please chime in. Don't let me talk too much. That's one of my, one of my governing rules is don't let Doug talk the whole time. You don't want to get me started. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think it'll be a very interesting uh, conversation. Um, you know, some of the pre-work we did is it it just, we could have recorded that because it was just, <laughs> so who's ever watching this or listening to it, I think, uh, start taking notes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, and um, because like, one of the things we were talking about in, in the pre, our pre-conversation is how uh, is just sort of the evolution of video in terms of you know, you know just in terms of kind of the sales process because of course right, when you're talking business to business right you know everybody's everybody uses email a lot of people get leads online a lot of people do either ads or posts on LinkedIn uh, you know there's a number of those 21st century elements uh, but one of the things that you know but like video marketing it feels like there is a way to incorporate that into sales funnels that is more sophisticated than is being done right now. Uh, Just because at least what I see in a lot of cases is, for example, you know, you'll have a YouTube channel, you'll have, you know, there'll be like, say a few brand promo. I'm I'm thinking specifically in the business to business space, uh, because I think that's where there's the, you know, that's where there's the most room uh, kind of the most room for improvement with video because in, in the business to consumer space, you know, people are already on the bandwagon. I mean, and because it's a, it's a medium that the video serves really well, right? It's you're, you're trying to get a broad audience to pay attention to something. So splashing out a whole bunch of videos makes sense. In the case of like a business to business, you have say a CEO or a CFO or a division vice president who is your decision maker. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to isolate a, very small niche of uh, of companies with video, and so I think the it's it's still a powerful tool, but it has to be used differently than if you're trying to do something like I don't know, sell beanbag chairs. I only say that because we, we bought a beanbag chair for my son for Christmas <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, the use case of video is completely different, B two B, B two C. Um, and we, our, our business behavior is driven by our personal behavior. Yeah. Uh, that's why we are, are all comfortable buying plane tickets and you know, uh, hotels and, and six-figure, well, four-figure, or sometimes even five-figure, six-figure purchases online. Yeah. We didn't do that years and years ago. Yeah. And that's where the adoption of video comes yeah. in from a B2B standpoint. But the difference with B2B is, you know, finding the right place. So you, you want to stick within the rails of your processes uh-huh. that you have and then slide video into that. Video is nothing more than content. That's it, yeah. right? Brochure is content. A web page is content, you know? So um, a, a phone call is quote unquote content, yeah. right? So if you have this process that you have in terms of the sales process and you're going to have those touch points, well, there is a place for video in that and it's becoming um, more prevalent in that process because people are researching before they talk to salespeople, right? So you need to be found. You need to be able to explain to a busy decision maker quickly in order for that lead to convert to have the opportunity to engage into a sales conversation. So therefore video does a really good job of giving somebody who you don't know the most amount of information in the shortest amount of time and they can watch it over and over again and share it with people. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. Well, and because I think the the thing that I think of that video can be really helpful for is, uh, you know, if you can appropriately incorporate it into a sales funnel, you can use it to help prospects pre-qualify themselves so that instead of you having to take them down the whole sales path, then you can start in the middle, Um, you know, Mm -hmm. because of course you'll get, you know, 
because you know, getting past the awareness uh, familiarity, you know, if you, if you can come in where they already have awareness, they already have familiarity, they already know what 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 you do, and are halfway convinced that it's the right thing for them, uh, you know, that can in, that can reduce time and increase closing rates considerably. Uh, that, now, that putting correct. that to, putting that together is no small feat, right? You know, that's not something that we're going to do in a in, in a quarter of an afternoon. Uh, but it's you know, I think that's the that to me is where the use case really uh, really is going to be the strongest. Um, you know, let, let let me know what I'm missing. I'm sure I've got blind spots here. Well, when they convert. So somebody's online, they're researching, they convert yeah. into a lead, they're kind of already convinced that you've got some value there. So yeah. the use cases are, well, how does video convince them? Well, if you have a video on a website yeah. versus not having it, you're making it harder for them to be convinced. So uh -huh. therefore your conversion rate is gonna be <clears throat> higher yeah. with video. And then once they are converted, what happens? Then you talk to them, you're consulting, you're coming up with a, you know, a scope, you're doing whatever you do within your industry, and, but they, you still have, a, you have competition, right? Yeah. And that's when, again, you can use video, di different videos, right? Than the one that they saw at the, at the top of the funnel, they're now in the sales funnel. Yeah. You might have case studies, you might have product specific videos, you might have guarantee videos, you might have processed videos, whatever that might be, that, that reminds them of all of those things. So you're, you're talking to them now on Zoom or a phone call, you meet yeah. them, like how much are they really going to remember? You know? And also like, do you have access directly to decision makers? Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have your champion then has to distribute information to that decision maker or that decision making committee going off the PDFs and the limited knowledge that they have of your organization. What if you had a video that you gave to that champion that they needed to click a button? That's it. Yeah. Right. They don't need to say anything. And you are directly communicating with that entire decision-making committee. Right. So powerful. Like what are your chances of doing everything you need to do? I.e., the no like and trust factor. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's just through the roof. So therefore, yeah. that's where, you know, kind of video plays a role in, you know, generating that lead and then, you know, taking that person through the sales funnel. But that organization, the, 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 sell, the selling organization needs to understand that they, they need a library of videos. It's not just one that's going to do all of that. Yeah, well, and because, yeah, where my, where my mind was going when you were talking about that is that, you know, in order to really do this, essentially what you're, you know, essentially what you're going to do is you'll, you'll need to take probably the better part of a day brainstorming out, okay, what are all of the things that people would either want to know about their, their rep, about the company, about the product, about the solution, you know, and, you know essentially kind of think of every question somebody might have that you'd want to answer. And then that becomes your, you, you know, then you need to figure out, okay, what's the script for all of those? And then just start recording and just understand this process could take a while, but it, you know, but that's good. Th those are going to give you the pieces, kind of the chess pieces that you need in order to use video for that, you know, in order to really incorporate video into your sales funnel. Because I think that, you know, the way that a lot of people think about, about using video uh, is that they think, okay, we're gonna make a three minute promo video for their company. It's like, okay, well, yeah, but that, but that doesn't quite do it. <laughs> Um, you know, yep. but, you know, because you know, if you're talking B two B, what you really need is you need a way to get you. You what video will really do if you do it correctly is you need to be able to get decision makers to self select and then go down the no like and trust curve without needing to be chased down by a rep. Yep. Because you know, the, the traditional way of business development is you essentially have a representative who sends out emails, makes a whole lot of phone calls. And as I say, um, you know, basically ch you know, chases down and uh, you know, chases down and tries to tackle the, uh, the decision maker, uh, metaphorically speaking, yep, not yep. literally. And that's not the way it works anymore. 
Yeah, yeah, right? that's you know? well. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure. Well, I, I, I know, I know for a fact there are organizations still doing it that way, but that's not the way. That's not best practice anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, you know that that's very much an '80s '90s way of doing. Yeah, but things. you know what? I think if we really, you know, okay, look at it on an aggregate level, you have organizations <laughs> doing both. Like they understand to some extent that they need the digital channel to generate, yeah. leads, but they still have, you know salespeople doing some traditional stuff. Yeah. So how do you, how do you bridge that? You know, and it, and it comes to this stuff, there's many ways to do that, but this podcast today is about video. So yeah. we're going to stay focused on video, right? Um, so what you said is, is, you know, writing down all the questions yeah. that a prospect would have versus that company overview video, right? Now let's uh-huh. just think about those two things. Cause I have this conversation all the time. Yeah. We probably have it almost come daily. To me, yeah. You know, of like, oh yeah, we want to do a video that talks about us and shows about us and about us. I'm like, okay, that's that's great. But that gives you one video that is about you versus coming up with a plan to utilize that budget and maybe create 10 videos that are FAQ question and answer videos that your customers actually care about and they're out searching for those those solutions to those <clears throat> problems. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying you still need to do that corporate overview video, but if you're like getting started or F SEO or content creation is part of your strategy, what would you rather have, you know, 10 or one? Well, right? and, and one of the things I keep thinking too, is that, um, was it, uh, it's probably it's dated now, but it was, I think there was uh, just a, uh, there was a, extremely successful sales letter for a video sales letter for an, uh, you know, for, you know, a popular in, uh, investment newsletter. It was about 10 years ago or so it ran for, I don't know, ran effectively for multiple years. But basically what it was, was it was a, a video that just had a background image and then a person reading. And then the text just came on the screen one sentence at a time as they were reading it. And it was like a 45 minute <laughs> sales video, sales letter video, and the text, I mean, it was just the simplest, the most brain dead, simple thing. And, but it converted like crazy. And so I think that's the other thing too, is that there's a tendency to want to make everything flashy, but ultimately you have to go with what converts. Yeah, exactly. Now, that being said, if you're a professional organization, it should be professional, flashy, flashy, professional, and not quality are three different things, right? So, you know, I I literally had an email last, yesterday, I was gonna say last night, um, uh, with a marketing consultant whose client is a very uh, large financial services company. Uh And they have their, uh, some YouTube videos of their top executives looking down, the quality's crap, it's on Zoom, and I said to them, like, there's a better way to do that, right? And he's like, well, we kind of don't want it to be that nice. I'm like, again, you can have it still be quality and professional, but not that nice. You know, it doesn't need to be overly produced. Yeah. But we're talking like, you know, the CEO of a $2 billion company, it doesn't, ref- they would, and I said to yeah. him, he, they would never have a brochure like that. They would never show up a meeting like that, right? They would never have a trade show booth that was not so nice. Yeah. Why is that okay with video? Well, <laughs> and I mean, and the thing is, you're, especially because you're, if you're doing, say, where you have, like, say, uh, you know, if, you, if you're doing, like, say, just a person to camera type of video, sort of similar to, like, what we're doing, it's really not that complicated to to, to, to produce a decent video. It's like, you know, number one is, you know, make sure that you try to have as many distractions as you can away. Number two, make sure you have a light so that the person doesn't have weird shadows on their face. And number three is make sure that you look at the camera because yeah. what a lot of people do, especially in Zoom, is they'll look at the person's uh, image that they're talking to, not necessarily the camera. So their eyes will look like they're, they're reading a book that's underneath the screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. precisely, precisely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the that 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 is the telltale sign of people who are doing Zoom on laptops is that it'll look like they're reading a book that's underneath <laughs> that's under the camera, and mm-hmm. that's because they're looking down at the camera or you know, or they're looking at the screen instead of at the camera. I mean, and that's the thing is it doesn't it's not that complicated to be able to especially if you're just doing a person to camera type of conversational uh, video. It's not that complex to make a halfway decent video. Yeah. 
I totally agree. Yeah, <laughs> some people, some people um, don't want to invest. I don't know the reasons why, yeah. but what I would say is um, always lead with a professional. And, and this is also what I gotcha. said to this marketing consultant, like it's okay to have less, lesser than good quality video as uh -huh. long as you have the majority of the stuff out there is high quality. Yes, yeah. people are forgiving. And that's what they said, right? And so people are forgiving, yes, but make sure that you you have good stuff out there if you're a professional organization. And then if you got one or two pieces that are like off the cuff, not so great, then you know that's okay. Like for yeah. us, we're a video marketing company. So we need to have good stuff. But I also have stuff of like that I've done on my phone at a trade show or something like that that's not the highest end quality. That's okay because I've got a ton of other great stuff out there that people can see that's not me. The other stuff is me. Well, and the, like the, at least the way that I would think would probably be optimal to mix that up would be that, you know, if you are incorporating video into your sales funnel, then that's something that you really want to have pretty sharp. On the other hand, if you have something, say that you're that you're posting up on LinkedIn, or you know, say you end up putting it like someplace like Instagram or TikTok or whatever, I don't think it's you know, I don't I don't think the bar needs to be set as high. But if it's if you're trying to bring people down the no like and trust path to where they decide they want to do business with your business, that should be something that you thought of in advance. That is not something where you want to be shooting from the hip. Yep. Um, and another reason, uh, another thing to consider is um, that video lasts a long time. So you mentioned TikTok. Yeah, yeah something that's going to be on TikTok that you probably don't want to put a lot of money behind that. But a sales video, how long is that going to last? And we have clients that we created sales videos for four years ago. They still use them week in and week out, right? They invested appropriately in them. And they have good quality video and it's not just the, you know, the, the, the look of the video, but there's a lot that goes into a quality video that you will never, ever see the pre-production and the planning, uh, the framing, like you said, to kind of make things nice in the yeah. background. Those are things that you, we all take for granted because we watch TV. That's perfect. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, most of the stuff nowadays that we watch on Netflix or Amazon or, or Apple, it's, it's shot in a studio and it's yep. green screen, hundred percent. It's perfect all the time. So there's a lot that goes into making a good looking video and to make the right investment uh, in a sales video that will, that you'll, you'll pay or invest today, but it's like the gift that keeps on giving because literally you can use that sales video for the next three to four to five years. Potential. Well, and, and the, the way that I would think about, this, especially some of these sales videos is similar to some of the, the old, old school long form sales letters, um, you know, and now I'm going to be dating myself here, but like, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I've gone on to, uh, gone onto his website, well, actually his son's website and read some of the old Gary Halbert sales letters. And some of these things converted for like five, 10 years, you know, basically mm -hmm. where they would just print them up, fold them up, put them in, <laughs> put them in letters, send them out. And then people would mail in money. And, you know, it's like really, really well-written sales letters or really well done sales videos can convert for a disturbingly long time. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yep. And I'm sure there was a lot of thought that went into that sales yep. letter. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, well, oh, ab absolutely. Yeah. Well, because, oh, well, and exactly. Because, yeah, the, and let me tell you, the people who are good at writing those sales letters, uh, they, they don't just sit down and do it. They, there's, there's a lot of pre planning that goes in. There's, mul there's multiple uh, edit versions. You know, they'll, they'll send out, they'll, they'll split test. You know, it's, there's a lot of work that goes into making these things uh, really consistently high converting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agreed. So, all right. So, uh, so let's see. So let's say that everybody, that people who are listening and they say, all right, I'm, I'm sold. I want to take the next step. What's the next step? It really depends on where they are at their video adoption. Um, yeah. There's different levels. Like they've never done video before. I've done some video or I've done a lot of video, but I need a strategy. Right. Yeah. So we have those three personas getting started, doubling down or need a strategy really okay. depends kind of where you are on that adoption curve. But what I would say is that if you're at a zero, 
right? It's a great time to get to a one, two, or a three. If you're at three or four, it's a great time to get to a five or a six. And if you're at a six, seven, eight, it's a great time to really hone a strategy, yeah. to make sure that you are consistent and then get up to a nine or a 10. So um, that's kind of where I would say with, you know, to respond to that. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, where can people go to learn more to either connect with you, uh, your company, or to uh, just uh, dive deeper into the rabbit hole? Yeah. Um, Multivision Digital, our website. There's a ton of thought leadership stuff there. Um, there's tons of portfolio sections that you could check out. And our yeah. contact information is uh, at the top of the page. So reach out, call me, email me, fill out a form. Happy to spend some time just advising and, and, and answering some questions. Video is a, is so much of a professional service. Um, yeah. The cameras and our equipment are really just how we execute, you know, on the professional service. So happy to, again, spend some time giving ideas, bouncing some things around with people. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's great to hear everybody that, uh, let's see, multivisiondigital.com. I assume yep. it's .com. Okay. Yes. Multivisiondigital.com. And uh, Robert, really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. And hope everybody got some good value out of it. All right. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Share it with your friends by sending them to terminalvaluepodcast.com. For more information, please visit businessoflifellc.com for full access to Doug's products and services. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.